Hello YouTube viewers, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. And the 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 main reason I'm zooming in on this is so, so I can take a screenshot of the, the name of this video later on. So note to self, make sure I t t take a s s screenshot of this video ASAP. YouTube viewers, thank you and I advise you to, 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 to do the same. The return of Christ is the most anticipated event in the Bible. When he returns, his kingdom will cover the earth. So when can we expect this to happen? What will be the sign of his coming? And is there evidence that we are right at the door of his return? The Bible reveals the answers to these questions and how the Antichrist will rise. Stay tuned for the four facts about the second coming that will shock you. Jesus happens when the gospel has reached all nations. The number one question believers and non-believers have is why hasn't Jesus returned yet? What is the delay? When is he going to come and gather up his church and then reign on the earth? It's been almost 2,000 years. What's going on? Well, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus explains exactly what must happen before he returns. At the beginning of chapter 24, Jesus was with his followers and they had the question that many of us have today. They wanted to know, Lord, when will you return? When is it going to happen? So in Matthew 24, verse 3, it reads, Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come to my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. You see, Jesus wanted to make it clear to them when they should expect his return. And so in verse 6, he's going to begin to let them know exactly what must happen before he returns. Verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Verse 7, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. And then he says this in verse 8, all of these are the beginning of birth pains. You see, Jesus was telling them, basically, my return will not come until there have been wars and nations rising against nations and kingdoms rising against kingdoms. The first thing that must happen is wars and kingdoms rising against each other and nations rising against nations. Well, that's happened. I mean... The Crusades, kingdom rising against kingdom. World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, nation rising against nation, and even today, wars and nations are clashing. So that has already happened. Uh -huh. So what is the next thing that he says must happen before he returns? Well, in verse 9, he says this. You will be handed over and persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. Well, check that off the list. That has already happened, too. Amen. It happened to the disciples. They were killed for their faith. And even today, believers all over the world are being killed because of their faith. And notice how he said that you would be hated by all nations. You see, when he said that you would be hated by all nations, he wasn't just speaking to the disciples. He was speaking to us because at that time, all the nations didn't even know about Jesus. But to us, 
we are living in days where if you even claim to be one of those Jesus followers, you will get hate from every nation. We're there. So what is the next thing? What is the next thing he says must happen before he returns? Verse 10. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. And because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this also we see today. I mean, how many have abandoned the faith? Do you see more people hating each other now than it used to be? I think so. You see hate like it hasn't been in a long time. You see false prophets and people who make claims that don't come true. Okay, let's check that off the list. So what is the next thing that he says must happen until the moment of his return? We've experienced the wars. Okay, we've had the wars. We have seen believers killed for their faith. We've seen hatred among people. What is the final thing that he says must happen before his return? Here it is. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come and that's it that's it he says his return doesn't happen just after there have been wars and earthquakes no he says his return happens when every nation has heard the gospel of the kingdom wow now, I want to show you something here when you look at the word for nations it is the Greek word ethnos and in the Greek you will see that in the Bible that word ethnos primarily refers to Gentiles and Gentiles refers to non-Jewish nations you see when Jesus was on the earth talking to his 12 disciples only the Jewish people in Israel knew about him but he wanted them to know that he wouldn't return until every nation, even those who aren't Jewish nations, has heard about his message. Fast forward nearly 2,000 years, and what has happened? Exactly what he said would happen. Jesus did not fade away in history. The writings of his disciples, they didn't disappear. And we now live in a world where just about every nation knows who Jesus is. That he is a king, and mm -hmm. that he has a kingdom, and that he will return. Now that was one of the last things Jesus said would happen before he returns. He said that there would be wars, there would be a lot of hate, and then he said that when every nation has heard the good news of the kingdom, then I am going to return. And we are living in times today where most nations, especially the Gentile nations, know that Jesus is the king of kings. And they, if you say, who is the son of God? They will say, oh, Jesus. If you say, who is, it, who is the king of kings? They will say, oh, Jesus. They know that he is the kingdom. They know that he has promised to return. The nations know, by and large, we are living in the fulfillment of what he said would happen. We have had the wars. We have had the hate. And now for the first time in history, just about every nation knows who he is. In fact, with YouTube, just this video alone is reaching every nation. Think about that. You see, Satan thought that YouTube would be a tool to spread hate. And yeah, that's happened. But God has flipped it and used YouTube as a tool to spread the kingdom. In these last days, it has become one of the number one tools that is reaching every nation with gospel-centered teaching explaining the kingdom of God. Remember, Jesus never said that every person would hear his message. What he said was every nation would hear. And in this generation, 
God has allowed technology to advance for the purpose of doing what the people in Jesus' day would have thought impossible. And that is reach every nation with God's kingdom in a single day. Jesus said it. The last thing that would happen is that the world would hear the gospel. And we're there. We are getting there. <laughs> if we're not already there. Now, does the Bible get any more specific than that? Is there anything more specific that must happen before he returns? Well, actually, it does say that there is something very specific that must happen before he returns. But before I show that very last thing that must happen before his return, we need to look at fact number two. Fact number two. When he returns, all eyes will see him. Now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 24. Remember, the disciples asked him, Lord, when will you return and what will be the sign of your coming? So the entire context of Matthew chapter 24 is really framed to answer the question of, Lord, when will you return and what will be the sign of your coming? So as you read through Matthew chapter 24, he talks about all the things that we just went over. There will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be nations. There will be famines. There will be false prophets. There will be wickedness. And he continues to talk about the things that will happen before his great return. In verse 36, he says, about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but only the fathers. And then you get down to verse 40, and he says this. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, and the other left. Therefore... Keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Now, this is interesting, because the entire context of Matthew 24 is framed to answer the question, Lord, when is your coming? When is your second coming? When, you ret when will you return, and what will it look like? What will happen? And then, he, as he's explaining that, he says, two men will be in the field, one will be taken, one left. Doesn't this sound familiar? <laughs> Sounds a lot like the rapture. You know, you've probably heard these verses before. You know, one person there and then Jesus returns and the other one is just left there, left behind. I'm sure you've heard that. But here, Jesus says that this is what will happen at his return. And this whole chapter is about the second coming. And he says there's going to be this moment when two are in the field and one will be taken. It sounds a lot like the rapture. So, um... The question is, when he returns, is it going to be in secret? I mean, it, this sounds like it will be in secret when this happens here. Will anybody else see it? Well, when you look more into the context of this chapter and look into the previous verses, he says this. So if anyone tells you, there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wow. Doesn't sound like much of a secret. And then in verse 30 he says even further, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power wow. and great glory. Wow. I mean, it, it, it clearly shows here that when he returns, you know, you will have one person there and then the other person taken. And will that happen in secret? Well, he says in this context that at his return, he says it will be so visible that it will be like lightning flashing across the sky. And he says that when he returns, all the people of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds. Every eye will see. Every eye will see. And so when he returns and everyone sees this, notice what it says happens next. Verse 31. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. 